ETVCG or an external TV camera group. It has a questionable power supply, so we will bring it inside on EVA 2, and uh, then inside the vehicle between EVAs 2 and 3, the crew will replace the uh, power unit, and then we'll take it back outside on EVA 3 and reinstall it. And I think that with that, we're ready for the uh, video for EVA 2. For EVA 2, we can see the configuration is updated and the JPM is now installed on the, nor uh, on the Node 2 port side. The crew will be working uh, mostly on the end cone on the port side of the JPM for their preparation out here. Uh, the first task for EV1, Mike Fossum, is to install one of two of the camera groups. Uh, this camera, again, is used to view the GEM RMS clearance views. Uh, this camera is called a JTVE, or a GEM Television External Camera. It's uh, one of the two that will be installed. These cameras will also help with uh, views of the uh, exposed facility after it is installed on Flight 2JA. So while EV1 is installing the uh, aft camera, EV2, Ron Guerin will be installing the forward camera, which is a mirror image of, of the one that uh, Mike just installed. Both of these cameras will have a launch lock that will need to be removed to allow the camera to function. And once the crew is complete with all their tasks on the end cone and move clear, uh, the ground will power these cameras up and uh, verify their functionality. The next task for the crew members is to move to the robotic arm on the JPM. It's uh, called the GEM RMS. There are six joints. Uh, each of those joints has a thermal cover, and then the end effector also has a thermal cover. So seven covers total to be removed here. Here they are labeled. Uh, covers one and two cover up the uh, shoulder joints, and then four, five, and six are known as the wrist cluster. And then there's the end effector. Uh, cover three is out of view here, but we have another picture for that. It is on the nadir side of the module. I think we have a short video here showing the crew at the Kennedy Space Center uh, removing cover three on the flight hardware. Each of these covers will have uh, two quarter turn fasteners that hold it in place. The crew will release each of those quarter turn fasteners which will allow uh, the cover to come off. Once the cover is removed, uh, you can see a shiny silver uh, object on the lower part of the screen and that is actually the joint electronics unit, the electronics for each uh, uh, joint and that is what we're actually protecting with this cover. Each of the covers also has uh, two grounding wires that the crew will disconnect. Those are just connected with the Velcro uh, to the joint itself. After the covers have all been removed and packed uh, in a bag, the crew will move to the Zenith side of the JPM to begin preparing the uh, Zenith active common berthing mechanism uh, for the JLP relocate which again will occur on flight day seven. The first task is to remove a two-part MLI cover that covers the entire uh, surface of the ACBM. These are two fairly large uh, covers that the crew will remove and then stow in a bag. Here's a picture of the flight hardware of those. And then with the covers removed, the uh, berthing mechanism underneath. The uh, crew will inspect all of the surfaces and make sure the ACBM looks as it should and then we'll remove a pit pin from the hatch mechanism, which is actually a launch lock for the hatch mechanism. And then the last task on this is to release a couple of launch locks, uh, a couple of bolts really, that are holding these deployable MMOD shields in place for launch. We'll see these uh, a little bit more on EVA3 and it'll be a little more clearly, uh, a little more clearer how they're used, but uh, these basically deploy to uh, protect the mating surface between the JLP and the JPM uh, from orbital debris. The last task on the JPM is to install trunnion covers. The trunnions are these metal posts that help attach the module in the payload bay. Uh, on orbit, they uh, form a heat sink, so uh, we install these covers to help uh, prevent any concerns of condensation inside the vehicle. After that task is complete, the crew will work off, uh, move off to work on the preparation of their nitrogen tank assemblies. EV2, Ron Guerin, will move off to the starboard nitrogen tank to prepare that, while EV1, Mike Fossum, will work, work his way out to ESP3 on the port side of the truss to, to prepare the spare nitrogen tank assembly. On his way, he'll pick up uh, this uh, APFR articulating portable foot restraint. This foot restraint will be the, the base that he'll work from on EVA3 to remove the spare NTA from ESP3 and temp stow it on the opposite side uh, of the platform, which will be uh, more clear again on the video for EVA3. So he'll translate that out here and then he will install that foot restraint on the uh, zenith side of the ESP3. After that's complete, he'll open up a little MLI cover here which uh, exposes the NTA or nitrogen tank assembly. He will uh, release the four bolts they are set for uh, launch loads and he will uh, release torque on those and then reset them within the pistol grip tools uh, range to speed up the operation on EVA3. 
He'll also, on the uh, opposite side of that NTA, install a couple of thermal covers over the quick disconnects to keep them from overheating during the translation between ESP3 and uh, S1. While he's doing that, EV2, Ron Guerin has moved to the back side of the truss, and he is going to work on the uh, back side of the NTA on this side. He will open up what we uh, call a shower curtain MLI here. It slides down. Uh, the NTA has some nitrogen lines that are connected between it and the ATA, or the ammonia tank assembly, which is immediately to the left there, the large box. Uh, so he'll disconnect the uh, nitrogen lines from the ammonia tank and uh, stow them on some dummy ports on the uh, nitrogen tank assembly, and then close up the shroud. He'll also install the same thermal covers over the quick disconnects that EV1 did out at ESP3. The ground will begin venting the lines of the NTA to keep them from uh, overpressurizing during the transfer from S1 to ESP3. On the front side of the truss, EV2 will complete a couple of tasks on the NTA to get it in its final configuration for EVA3. The first of the tasks is the same as what uh, EV1 performed out on ESP3, and that is to break torque on all four of the bolts holding this to the truss and then reset them within the uh, limits of the pistol grip tool. And then there are three electrical connectors that he will demate and then uh, pull the cables back out of the way and stow them inside of the truss. At the end of this, the NTA is uh, only in place by those four bolts that will be removed on EVA3, and then the, the NTA can be removed from its rails. When he is complete with that, uh, he will translate out to the port side of the truss to join up with uh, EV1, where they will retrieve the final item on this EVA, which is the external television camera group. This is on the far outboard side of P1 on the Nader side. The first thing they'll do is uh, release a bolt and then install a uh, handling aid to, to give them something to hold onto this thing with. Uh, swing it behind themselves on their body restraint tether, and then they will work their way back uh, to the airlock after they've cleaned up the work site and uh, get this thing in the airlock. And that will complete all of our uh, tasks on EVA2.